In activity nine, plink plunk toot toot, students first observe that the length of a vibrating object affects the pitch of the sound it produces. They then test this theory by changing the pitch of three vibrating objects through varying their lengths. You will need the following materials from the kit. Activity sheet nine, plastic straws, tongue depressors, fishing line, and a xylophone. You will also need to provide pencils and scissors. To prepare for session one, make a copy of activity sheet nine for each student. Cut a 50 centimeter length of fishing line for each team of two. Each team of two will need a pencil, two tongue depressors, and a length of fishing line. To begin session one, divide the class into teams of two and distribute the materials. Have the teams wrap the fishing line around the tongue depressor once and tie a knot in the line near the depressor. Instruct the teams to hold the tongue depressor flat on a desk so that the attached fishing line lies along the top of the desk. As one student holds the tongue depressor firmly in place, tell the other student on the team to slide a pencil under the fishing line about 25 centimeters from the tongue depressor and to pull the line taut. Pluck the line between the tongue depressor and the pencil and listen to the sound. Have the students switch roles so that each student is able to pluck the line and hear the sound produced. Ask students, what did you hear? They should have heard a plinking sound. Define length as the distance from one end of an object to the other. Ask students, what do you think will happen to the sound if you change the length of the line? Accept all suggestions. Distribute activity sheet nine and have students record their predictions. Next, have the student holding the pencil move it closer to the tongue depressor, pluck the line, and then move it further from the tongue depressor and pluck it again. Ask students, how would you describe the change in the sound? The student should notice a change in pitch. Next ask, what do you think will happen to the pitch if you lengthen the part of the line that vibrates when you pluck it? Tell the students to record their predictions, then test them. Move the pencil six to 10 centimeters away from the tongue depressor and pluck the line. Continue to move the pencil away from the tongue depressor, six to 10 centimeters at a time, each time plucking the fishing line. Discuss the student's observations by asking, what happened to the pitch as you moved the pencil away from the tongue depressor? The pitch went down. Then ask, how would you describe the effect on the pitch when you lengthened the vibrating part of the line? The longer the vibrating line, the lower the pitch and the shorter the vibrating line, the higher the pitch. Give each team another tongue depressor and ask, how do you think you could vary the pitch of the sound produced by snapping the tongue depressor? Some of the students may suggest varying the length of the depressor that extends over the edge of the desk. Then ask students, what do you think will happen to the pitch if you lengthen the part that extends over the edge of the desk? Most of the students will probably infer that the pitch will get lower. Have students record and test their predictions. Then ask, how would you describe the effect on the pitch when you varied the length of the vibrating part of the depressor? The students should understand that the longer the piece that vibrated, the lower the pitch, and the shorter the piece that vibrated, the higher the pitch. To conclude session one, have the students remove and discard the fishing line from the tongue depressors and return the tongue depressors to the kit. To prepare for session two, construct a model of the straw reed. Flatten a two centimeter section at the end of one straw and cut the two sides of the flattened section of the straw at an angle to form a point and practice making sounds with it. Each team of two will need four straws and a pair of scissors. To begin session two, show the students the model reed you constructed. Place the cut end of the straw in your mouth and blow softly. Distribute the materials and help the students make their own straw reeds. Give the students some time to practice making sounds. Then ask, how do you think the sound is produced? 
The students should know that when they blow, the moving air causes the pointed ends of the straw to vibrate, which in turn vibrates the column of air inside the straw to make a sound. Next, ask students, how do you think you could vary the pitch of the sound produced by a straw reed? Some of the students may suggest cutting it. Explain that instead of cutting the reed, they will make several reeds of different lengths. Then ask students, what do you think the pitch of the sound will be like when you blow on the longest reed? Most of the students will understand that the longest reed will have the lowest pitch. Ask them to record their predictions on the activity sheet. Instruct the students to make two more reeds from the remaining straw by cutting the straw into two pieces of different lengths. They should have three reeds of different lengths. Have the students test their predictions by blowing on each reed. The students should have observed that the shorter the straw, the shorter the vibrating column of air in the straw, and the higher the pitch. And the longer the straw, the longer the vibrating column of air in the straw, and the lower the pitch. Show the students the xylophone and point to the bars. Ask students, which bars do you think produce a lower pitch? Have them record their predictions on the activity sheet. Hit the longest bar and then the shortest bar of the xylophone. Ask students, which bar produced the sound with the lower pitch? The longest bar has the lower pitch. Next, hit the bars in order from shortest to longest. The student should notice the pitch goes down, moving from short to long. Then ask, what can you conclude about the effect of the length of the bar on the pitch of the sound produced by hitting it? The longer the bar, the lower the pitch. The shorter the bar, the higher the pitch. Give the students time to review the record of their predictions and observations on the activity sheet. Encourage them to look for patterns. Finally, ask students, what can you conclude about the effect of length on pitch? They should conclude that the shorter a string or other vibrating object, the higher the pitch of the sound produced. The longer a string or other vibrating object, the lower the pitch of the sound produced. To conclude session two, students may keep their straw reeds, discard the scraps from the straws, and return the xylophone to the kit. For science background, reinforcement activities, curriculum connections, and information about the Delta Science Reader, please consult your DSM Teacher's Guide.